Hello, everyone. Welcome to part two of our look back at fads from the 1970s. So let's take another fun, slow, far out ride back to the 1970s and revisit some more of the fads we might have forgotten or may not even have known existed. Black light wall posters. This fad is a combination of two things. Wall posters printed or painted with fluorescent ink or paint and the black light needed for the fluorescing effect to appear. The ink or paints used for these posters contain phosphors, which cause them to glow when exposed to ultraviolet light emitted from the black lights. For anyone looking to zone out for a few hours to the hazy glow of the black light poster, all they needed to do was throw on their favorite 70s vinyl onto the turntable and stare into the depths of a fuzzy poster decked out with colors from all over the day glow spectrum. With their surreal visuals and the ability to glow when exposed to ultraviolet light, the posters could provide an almost 3D effect in a darkened environment and paired well with the music of the day in 1970s room decor. Some people said that the effect made them feel a sense of altered consciousness, while others said that those people were just too high. As the 70s turned into the 80s, the blacklight poster fad fell out of fashion and faded into the haze of the past. Fondue, not to be confused with Mountain Dew, this was a different kind of dew. Fondue pots seemed to be in everybody's house in the 1970s. The popularity of this cheesy 1970s fad was driven by a marketing campaign that started in the 1960s. It was promoted by an association of Swiss cheese makers, which aimed to convince the world to consume pots full of melted cheese. The ads featured attractive Swiss appearing models in ski sweaters socializing over pots of cheese. The ad campaign, along with the wide availability of fondue pots at SNH Green Stamp Redemption Centers, helped the fondue fad to spread far and wide. The fondue pots came in popular 1970s colors of the day, like avocado or lime green, harvest gold, and copper tone brown to go with your sweater clad friends gathered around to dip bread into melted cheese and watch your new color TV together. Of course, fondue is still around today, and one of the most popular fondue restaurant chains is the Melting Pot. Earth Shoes Footwear in the 1970s followed the evolution, and some say revolution, of the trends and tastes of the counterculture movement, and had become another way one could express their individuality in wardrobe choices. The Earth Shoe was the creation of a Danish yoga instructor and shoe designer named Anna Kalso. They embody a negative heel technology design feature where the sole was thinner at the heel than at the front of the foot. The design was an attempt at replicating walking in sand as the designer drew inspiration for the earth shoe from the excellent posture of indigenous Brazilians and the impressions left by their bare footprints as they walked through beach sand. Many people reported that they didn't like the fact that the front of the sole of the shoe was higher than the rear and that the design feature made their feet hurt. Retail sales of the brand in the U.S. were discontinued by the late 1970s, as the company couldn't keep up with demand. However, like all classics that refused to die, Earth Shoes made a comeback in the early 2000s and are again being manufactured and sold, so you can rock this groovy 70s footwear once more, should you ever decide to ditch the Crocs. The Dorothy Hamill Hairstyle A quintessential hairstyle trend from the mid-1970s was the Dorothy a wedge-cut type hairstyle that became ubiquitous with women and girls who wanted the short and sassy look. The look also seemed to pair well with oversized frame glasses. The fad got its push when Dorothy Hamill competed in figure skating and won a gold medal at the 1976 Winter Olympics representing the United States. The hairstyle, or Hamill Wedge as it became known, was created for Dorothy by stylist Yasuki Suga, who fashioned Hamill's naturally thick straight hair into a wedge cut. He made use of the bounce in her hair to cut it into a style that would move and flow with her as she skated. The wedge design created a flattering silhouette for Hamill as she skated her routines. The style eventually played itself out to be replaced by the big hairstyles of the 1980s. Puka Shell Necklaces You can see puka shell necklaces being worn by some characters on 1970s era TV reruns, like The Partridge Family. Teen idol David Cassidy's Hawaiian-inspired puka shell necklace he wore in the series helped launch it into the fatosphere. The necklace was a short-length, choker-style strung with the shells of a cone snail 
found along beaches of Pacific Ocean Islands. The puka shell necklace was originally popularized within the West Coast surf community, but when it appeared in photos of David Cassidy and on the Partridge family, a nation became smitten with the little shells worn around the neck. Bell-bottom pants. Bell-bottoms were pants typically made of denim material and worn by both men and women, though not at the same time. That's just crazy. These were a go-to garment in any disco fanatics or rock music fan's wardrobe. Bell-bottoms were low cut at the waist and flared at the bottom. The wider the better. The fashion trend started in the 1960s and became a popular fashion fad when celebrities and entertainers adopted the look, like Sonny and Cher on their variety TV show. Bell-bottoms became a symbol of the fashion style of the decade. Ask anybody what people wore in the 70s, and bell-bottoms would probably be a top-of-mind reply. Toward the end of the decade, the emerging punk rock and new wave fashion trends booted out bell-bottoms in favor of a slimmer pants style. The Farrah Fawcett Pinup Poster Farrah Fawcett, a 1970s era superstar whose image appeared on this seminal wall poster that holds the record as best-selling poster in history at over 12 million copies sold. This pinup poster became a defining feature of the 70s and showcased Fawcett's wholesome beauty while decorating millions of bedroom and dorm walls across the United States and across the globe. In 2011, Farrah's red swimsuit and a copy of the poster were donated to the Smithsonian's National Museum of American History to join its collection of culturally significant objects. At the time the poster was issued, it caught on like wildfire, and this was before the TV show Charlie's Angels had premiered. Prior to that, Farrah had been in shampoo ads mostly. The appeal is evident. The image on the poster depicted a wholesome, fresh-faced girl-next-door beauty with some low-key subtle nudity thrown in. As a teenager back then, you could bring this into the house and put it up in your room, as long as mom didn't look too closely. Waterbeds. Quick, how do you make your waterbed bouncier? Why, you just add spring water, of course. An old joke for a fad that began in the early 1970s and stuck around until the mid to late 1980s. The modern version of the waterbed was invented by Charles Hall in California and patented in 1971. It became a popular consumer item during the 1970s and was designed to reduce physical stress and offer therapeutic benefits to the user. It was intended as a serious sleep product. However, the media and advertising folks soon began promoting the waterbed by associating it with the sexual revolution of the 1970s. Even Playboy's Hugh Hefner began to advocate the waterbed and boldly proclaimed that he had one covered in opossum fur. One hopes he was referring to his waterbed. The downsides to the waterbed were that they were heavy, difficult to move, and often sprung leaks, with many landlords and dormitories banning the beds. They may be mostly gone, but what a great way to bring the motion of the ocean right to your bedroom. Lava Lamps let me set the scene for you. You walk into your groovy pad in the 1970s. The decor awaiting you there consists of a beanbag chair, a hand chair, the macrame owl wall art, a poster by R. Crumb, and the ever cool lava lamp. It was called the lava lamp because the media within sort of looked like lava as it flowed around inside the glass container. The lava lamp, or motion lamp, was trippy and hypnotic and just oozed 1970s cool. More than two million lava lamps were sold as decorative and meditative objects. But as with all fads, sales of the lava lamps plummeted in the mid-1970s due to protests and legislation banning their sale because of all the lava being stolen from volcanoes to keep up with production. Nah, that never happened. But the aesthetic appeal of lava lamps lives on to this day as a groovy reminder of a classic relic from the 1970s. Mood rings. And now, the 1970s fad that was a huge hit back then. The mood ring. The mood ring was one of the most popular jewelry fads of the 1970s and were worn by mostly teenagers who wanted to broadcast their mood to others around them. The ring could transition between different colors, supposedly, according to the mood of the wearer, whether it be angry, sad, joyous, or calm, among others. The ring itself used a glass shell 
filled with liquid thermotropic crystals that changed color depending on the temperature of the skin of the finger it was worn on. Although the concept was cool, the ring didn't really do what it was supposed to do. Eventually, most wearers realized that it wasn't really their body temperature or mood that was helping the stone to change color. It was more likely the exterior temperature of the ring itself when exposed to outside elements. The mood ring craze soon died out, and because of their absence, there were probably millions of people who weren't sure how they felt about that. But it was a fun fad and a cool way to show you were down with the groovy vibe of the 1970s. The 70s were a fun and cool time, when Lucky Charm Serio only had four marshmallow shapes, Morgan Freeman was the easy reader on the electric company, and millions of people dreamed of being a pinball wizard. There are still lots more fads from the 1970s that we didn't list in this video. But watch this channel for an upcoming part 3 of even more forgotten 1970s fads. I hope you liked the video and thank you for watching. Please subscribe by clicking on the button below. I really do appreciate your support.